Frank Skinner, and welcome to Room 101, the show where three guests battle to send the things they hate into the dreaded vault. Our guest choices have been sorted into categories, and in each round, only one item can be chosen. The final decision is mine. Let's meet this week's guest. Joining me tonight are actor, comedian, and pointless host Alexander Armstrong, superstar athlete Dame Kelly Holmes, and the golden voice of cricket, Henry Blofeld. <laughs> Okay, well, let's have the first category, please. It's modern life. So, what doesn't Alexander like about modern life? <laughs> Hello, Alexander. It's Frank here. I was just calling to see uh, what you want to put into room 101. Oh, hold on. Get, get, get on. <laughs> It's answer machine messages. Okay. Do you know what happens? You ring someone up and it, you know, ring, 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 <coughs> six times. You think, well, they're, it's they're not. It's a very good impression, if you don't mind. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I went for my phone get, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you get that telltale, there's a little click, and then someone, you get a very careful voice that says, Hello, Graham and Barbara can't get to the phone at the moment. They've been told to say that. They can't, they're not allowed to say, we're not here at the moment, just in case there's a burglar from 1976 at the other end. <laughs> um, we can't get to the phone at the moment. Please leave your name and number, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Beep. All of which could be summed up as beep. It's fine, just, just <laughs> for people's time. But actually, even leaving a message, I think, is a waste of time. These days we have, we have missed calls. Yeah. It's fine. I've had this thing with my girlfriend when she'll phone and say, yeah, what is it? And I say, well, I left a message. And she'll say, yeah, I haven't, I haven't listened to it. <laughs> and I'd say, well, phone me back when you've listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about the occasion you get a chap who rings up and you miss the call, and my immediate reaction is to ring them back. And then, of course, they're engaged forever while they're leaving a message. Yes. Oh, and that drives me absolutely mad. <laughs> but it's the other... I get messages from my mum, who I love dearly, but Ooh. she will leave messages between two and four minutes long. I mean, yes. they will be, you know... It'll be, Hello, darling, I'm going to tell you now in some detail what I will then tell you in minute detail when you, when you ring me. Are you aware of the got-to-go machine? No. You know, when you phone someone and you don't really want them to call you back. You just want to leave the message. So when you do your um, say you'll say hello this is Frank Skinner here if you want to call me back you can get me on oh, the one? Oh, seven five five <laughs> eight, five, seven, seven. <laughs> and, uh, your conscience is clear. <laughs> Okay, then, what doesn't Kelly like about modern life? The M25. <laughs> oh, my God, drive me insane. I mean, it's ridiculous. They widen the road, same problem. You have road work for two years, traffic, traffic, traffic. Take the roadworks out, traffic. Don't make any difference. <laughs> that's Pointless. A, that's Waste a good all that point. money, just sit there. The only time it's good is when you're bombing it down the little bit that's okay, like the three junctions, and everyone else is stuck in traffic, you're like. <laughs> 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 yeah. I imagine you go around the M25 like 70 <laughs> miles an hour and then really, really do about 120 just for the last three or four miles, just <laughs> towards the tape, <laughs> and then go around again with a Union Jack draped around the car. <laughs> If only, right? The only time I've done it where it's really good is when I was in the, I was in the military for nearly ten years. First three years, I was a heavy goods vehicle driver. Because mm. no one messes with that. No. <laughs> Did you ever drive a tank, it. Kelly? Yes. Uh, yeah. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Can you imagine on the M25 just ramming over them all? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my way! <laughs> Kelly, here's a clip I think you'll enjoy. In this instance, we found out that the the driver of the lorry has no awareness at all of what he's actually involved in. Get a load of this. Incredible that no one was hurt. Yeah, what really. I like is that the driver of the car had the brake lights on. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking, I'll, I'll stop this. 
<laughs> the trouble is, when you're side on looking in, I bet everyone, ev they were looking in the rear view mirror and all they could see were people going. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've actually got a, a road named after you. Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. well, that's the ultimate, that's better than a post box, isn't it? I've also, got, I've also got an old people's home named after me. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Kelly Holmes. That's <laughs> <great>. <laughs> yeah, we've got this is Dame Kelly Holmes Way. There it is, look. Actually, There's... yesterday I drove past this road and there was a couple that literally just come out of the house and their face was a picture looking at me going, like that, as they were standing right by that side. That's <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. perfect, sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Didn't you shout, get out of Dame Kelly Holmes' way? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Perfect. <laughs> okay, then. What doesn't Henry like about modern mm. life? <laughs> what I loathe more about modern life than anything are people who want to talk to me at breakfast. <laughs> I spend a huge amount of time staying in hotels or guest houses and I come down to breakfast and join a big communal table which puts the fear of God into me. And before <laughs> I've sat down and spilt my first cornflake over my shirt, three people have said to me, what do you make of KP then? <laughs> and this happened, and I loathe it. And I now <laughs> firmly come, I say first of all when I sign in the night before, uh, is there any way I could have breakfast at the table on my own? And if they say no, I say, is there any way you can send me a cup of coffee up to my bedroom? And if they say no, I go without having breakfast. <laughs> well, I must say, I've, I've spoken to a lot of strangers at breakfast over the years. <laughs> You have to be a little bit polite, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I'll grab the thing off the door if I'm going down in a hotel and have breakfast. Uh, like <laughs>
It's the wild card, so no restrictions. Now, anything you don't like, you can choose. So what is Kelly's wild card? <laughs> People. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Enough. People snoring in public places, mm. trains, planes, lounges, especially if they lean over on you, on the yeah. train, oh my gosh. <laughs> I went on a plane once with my mother, it was in the late 90s, I was going to Mauritius, and this guy, we hadn't taken off, we must have been sat down five minutes, and he'd literally fallen asleep within that first two minutes, and he started snoring, but he started snoring so loud, I mean really loud, it was like thunderstorm happening, mm. right? But he had his mouth open. So I got this magazine and I rolled up a piece of paper. Mum was going, don't, don't, don't. and I rolled this piece of paper and I went like this over the seat. And it, it, it went in his mouth. He went. I, I looked at, they had a, a, a list of most annoying train habits, and this was only 19. Really? On the list. Oh, my gosh. It's, um, it's, it's above, not just trains. It's above <laughs> derailment. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to come back from work, and he, he would sit, he'd watch the telly like this. <laughs> and I thought, this is the funniest thing that will ever happen. And then I saw... The same thing being done by a meerkat. It's a horrible, intimate noise, though, somebody else snoring, isn't it? That's oh, it very... Is. It's just sort of... It's, it's just very intrusive, all, isn't it? It's all... Yeah, it's really too... It's flemmy and... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, Kelly, you sadly ended any outside chance we ever had of having a close relationship, because I snore for the world, I think. <laughs> Your poor wife. She, she buys baseball bats. I'll <laughs> <laughs> with her. The internet um, features lots of people who have been photographed on public transport, sleeping. So this, here's a man asleep on the tube. <laughs> oh, he's definitely snoring. Look at that. <laughs> it's painful. <laughs> this is actually a photograph on, on a train, but you, you do get people on, on planes who, they're, if they're going to sleep, they don't just go to sleep, they have to go and get their sleep suit on and their sleep socks and all. Here is a man who has taken that just a stage further. Facial expression of the guy sitting next to <laughs> The thing is, if, if you're taking photographs of people asleep on public transport, when you get really lucky, they've got a dog with them as well. <laughs> okay, what's Henry's wild card? People, Frank, who endlessly say to you, whether you leave a restaurant, a shop, a snack bar, whatever, have a good day, have a nice day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't they say something like, we'll see you next time, or what's ho, or, 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 or don't panic if you like that. Yeah, when they say, have a good day, do you think they're going to rush back into their room and say, my goodness, I hope that blurs has a good day. It'd be awful if he had a stinker, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My pet thing is when people thank you in advance for things. So, sometimes you'll be driving down the road, you go into a little small village, and it, and it says, thank you for driving carefully. Yes, indeed. And I think, well, if they regard this as driving carefully, <laughs> they are liberal indeed. <laughs> and also that one, um, thank you for leaving... You get this in nightclubs. Thank you for leaving quietly. 
I've used that to uh, end a few relationships. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably the only person I know who could get away with toodaloo. <laughs> toodaloo? Yes, yes I, I toodle, toodle pip I do a bit. Okay. <laughs> do you know where that comes from, toodaloo? It's because French people say, a toodaloo. And apparently it was an old soldier's version of toodaloo. They say toodaloo. Yes, I thought it was okay. French for where's the toilet. <laughs> where, where does where does tinkety tonk come from? Oh God! <laughs> tinkety tonk. I, I think I prefer tinkety tonk to have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can introduce it to the strength of this program. Okay then. What is Alexander's wild card? Yes, this is the 27th, the 28th, the 29th and 30th of December. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a waste of time. <laughs> Can anybody remember, I wonder, anything that they have done meaningfully on any of those four days? Actually, to be honest, I would take the whole week. I'd take Boxing Day out as well. Wow. But I'm going to give you Boxing Day. Because let's, let's face it, it keeps Christmas Day special. If you've got, if you've got Boxing Day afterwards to be bored in, then you're just treading water. You do endless things that you'll always regret while you say the five words, oh, go on, it's Christmas. Basically, that's it. Oh, those five words have started so many terrible, terrible things. Go on, it's Christmas. We'll have five bottles of wine for lunch. How could you realistically do something about this? I think, I'm glad you asked that, Henry. <laughs> because I think maybe we could, we could speak to someone in charge. <laughs> um, we could maybe shift New Year's Eve to the 27th and then have it all then, have all the celebrations. And then we've got, what, four days in hand that we can maybe use as sort of wild cards throughout the year. <laughs> My problem with this is I think people really look forward to those lazy days. Mm -hmm. What you need is a harder job. <laughs> I bet you're sitting there thinking, oh, sitting there wasting our time, we could be recording another 20 episodes of Pointless. <laughs> Does Richard Osman come round and put your trimmings up, by the way? He has been known to, yeah. He... <coughs> was this Donny Osman, do you say? No, it was Richard. <laughs> yes, they're very close friends, Alexander and Donny Osman. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I recommend this covers that period perfectly. This is... Um, 96 hour deodorant <laughs> that you can put on on Boxing Day, you don't even have to think about it again until you get ready for the party on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so that's it. I, I can't do that, Alexander, because I really like it. How lovely to have no pressure at all to do nothing. It's great. And also, the snoring, I, I, I know what you mean, but they can't help it, these poor people. <laughs> people are working so hard, they're fatigued. But, have a nice day. I like politeness in all its forms, but I think it's become hollow. I think it's become something that people really don't mean. So I am going to put people who say, have a nice day, into Room 101. Right, let's have our next category. It's food and drink. So what doesn't Henry like about food and drink? <laughs> Restaurants that don't have powder-based English mustard. <laughs> I can think of a number of five-star restaurants who say yes, sir. They go off and they bring a pot of ready-mixed yellowness, which is rather nasty French mustard. I don't mean all French mustard is, is bad, it's not. No. But I think French mustard really is best taken when you want to disguise the original taste of the food you're eating. Mm. <laughs> really good English mustard is made with powder. You put a teaspoonful out of a tin into an egg cup and then you trickle a little bit of water in and you stir it round and then if, if you can you leave it for 24 hours to mature and it's brilliant. <laughs> 
Now, I've got to the point in this, you'll think this is absurd, that I, <laughs> there are restaurants I go to, I know, and hotels that don't have it. So I keep a tin of powdered mustard in the glove pocket of my car. Okay, I mean, in case anyone, any of our younger viewers have never seen um, what Henry speaks of, there, there, there it is, it's, it's a powdered variety. And I tell you, I, now I think I might be the only person who's ever done this, but what I love to do, and I'm not doing this for a joke, this is something I do in my personal life, is I like to dip a serious. banana. I don't know where this is going. Serious, I know. I'm serious. I like to dip a banana, thus, in the... Uh, oh. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'll tell you a thing you remind me of. Please don't tell me what I remind put, you of at this point. <laughs> I love sausages. So do I. But one of the problems with sausages is, the, is their tubularity. So that... They're tubes. You see. <laughs> and so, if you put something like ketchup or squidgy mustard on, often it, it won't stay on a hot sausage. It'll slide off. It's a sort of sausage rodeo mm. Mm. played by the thing. And I find that really annoying. Do when you put, you put the mustard on the, on the whole sausage? Oh, Why not cut the sausage into a little, yes, little, little coin of sausage? Yeah. Knife in the, in the mustard and smear it and up your nose. Oh, 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 Or dunk it, dunk it like your banana. Yeah, it's a bit of real dunk education like banana, here tonight. <laughs> I just love it. Okay, what yeah. does Kelly not like about food and drink? Okay, yes. Stickers. On the bottom of new plates, glasses, bowls, you name it. Oh my gosh, how many times have I bought a new set, you know, really exciting, or got some friends around, bought some new glasses, and you spend like half an hour trying to scrape these things off the bottom? I suppose the only way of guaranteeing taking them off is to let them soak for about 24 hours, then when did, won't they come no, off? No, I've tried to do that, that round by the time you're making that. the mustard. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> There is, there's a real, this is a real thing. Um, this is some that you get. I thought about this for an idea. You give, give your partner a, a nice cup of tea. Aww. And then it says, marry me. Aww. In the bo Has anything ever been more set up for someone to go... <laughs> <laughs> and also, what about when you give it, when the woman from next door comes around and you give her the cup and you think, oh, God, that's the marry me cup I've made for Susan. <laughs> What about this, Kelly? Would you, uh, would you serve stuff on... This is a plate <laughs> that actually comes with an uh, English breakfast printed no. on it. What do you think? I, no, I wouldn't. I have to say, I've <laughs> taken plates out of my dishwasher that have got this much food still on them. <laughs> now, honestly, it's just one, It's so irritating because yeah. they just put these stickers on and you can, can't get them off. You're, like, scraping them off. You put them, like I say, in a dishwasher. It goes all gluey. The sticker thing... I have a tweet, and right. this is from Richard Osman, who is, a, I know, a, a colleague and close associate of yours, Alexander. And here is Richard Osman's tweet, and it says, This keeps happening. Looks like someone in Tesco likes Alexander Armstrong more than Richard Osman. And he's referring to Tesco stocking the pointless book. Yeah. And this is what it looks like. <laughs> He's worth more than that. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so what doesn't Alexander like about food and drink? <clears throat> yes, these are unnecessary cocktail ingredients. I, oh. Now, I'd just be perfectly plain at this point. I have nothing against cocktails, per mm -hmm. se. I think cocktails are, are marvellous. They're racy, they're fun, they're... They're brightly coloured, they're exotic, they're delicious. They are, let's face it, the perfect way to introduce children to alcohol, which is... <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, actually, no, there's one thing is wrong with cocktails, and that's when you're standing at a pub behind somebody who asks for four mojitos. <laughs> And you know that you're going to be waiting there for, you're going to be there for half an hour while some sweaty well. man in an apron picks up some bar truncheon and starts mashing bits of herb with, uh, with it. Have you, have you ever... <laughs> <laughs> when I next hear someone ask for a Brandy Alexander, I shall watch with interest what they're going to get, won't you? <laughs>
<laughs> Truly, Henry, you are the voice of the people. <laughs> No, I think the, the, the cocktail I'm particularly talking about is the one... Uh, the cocktails that you make at home, Bloody Mary. The list of Bloody Mary ingredients just gets longer and longer for every year it exists because it's a drink made by hungover people, and hungover people just can never make up their minds what it is they want. You know, they, they know that something's going to make them better. What they don't realise is that thing is time. <laughs> Bloody Mary, it's, uh, it's uh, tomato juice and it's vodka, and that's all it is. And the rest you can do yourself, a little Liam Perrins, maybe some Tabasco. But no, 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 now somebody says, well, maybe you want a bit of lemon juice in that. And you go, oh, should I want lemon juice? Or maybe a bit of celery salt. You have to have celery salt and black pepper. And you go, okay, so I'll do all that. And they say, oh, I'll tell you what you want in that. A little bit of, little bit of beef consomme. <laughs> and they go, oh, there you go. Oh, no, no, i tell you what's missing from that. Horseradish. <laughs> now, this is an ingredient added by someone who's still drunk from the night before. <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't dissolve. It's not going to, you can't mix horseradish in. It just floats around like something horrific in a hot tub. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm slightly um, outside looking in on this because I have to drink virgin cocktails. Yeah. So I drink Virgin Mary instead of. Oh, you um, probably want all the stuff Mary. in that, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I mm. just, I mean, when I did drink, I really didn't want things sticking in the top of the glass. Anything that slowed me down. Yeah. I regarded ice cubes as sort of like speed bumps. <laughs> So I never, I never, even when I did drink, I never really saw the attraction of the, of the cocktail. Do you, would you drink cocktails, Kelly? I didn't drink when I was an athlete at all. No, of course. I kind of like champagne these days, you know, it's kind of I nice. don't think if athletes generally drink much, do they? Do they? <laughs> oh, go on. They shouldn't, they shouldn't mix it with all those drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, I, I just don't know that I see this as a major problem in life. The oh my gosh! Thing. All my cups and plates have still got stickers on, and <laughs> they come off. First two years are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the cocktails. I think the whole joy of a cocktail, isn't it, is all the extraneous stuff. Otherwise, you might as well just <laughs> drink turps. <laughs> <laughs> but Henry. I think of all the choices we've ever had on this show, the lack of powdered mustard <laughs> in restaurants, I cannot let that go by without it being recognised as, as particularly fine. So I am going to put restaurants not having powdered English mustard into room 101. <laughs> brings us to the end of the show. Well done, Henry. You were the most persuasive guest, so you are this week's winner. <laughs> and thanks very much, Alexander Armstrong, Dame Kelly Holmes and Henry Blofeld. And thank you, Tinkety Tonk. <laughs> <laughs>